Richard. Reverend Ian Christie is about to begin. Please turn to page 666. From the pages of Home of the Beast. Your weekly heavy metal history lesson with Ian Christie. Greetings and salutations. This is Ian Christie. Today, presenting Roots of 1994, the year in groove metal. Irresistible, bouncy aggression. Today, from the likes of Sepultura, Biohazard, Pantera, Testament, Meshuggah, Prong, Propane, Obituary, and of course, the Oakland Masters of the Bone Breaking Bounce. A stellar success story of 1994. It's Machine Head from the Burn My Eyes record, a song called Old. I'm Ian Christie. This is Roots on Sirius XM. There it is. And Machine Head in 2019 
gathering back together the bones of the 1994 Burn My Eyes lineup to re-record the tracks, perform them for appreciative audiences worldwide, and, yeah, acknowledging the significance and straight-out-of-the-gates fury that brought the Machine Head name to the rest of the world. It was groove metal. Welcome, this is Roots, your weekly metal history lesson, always exploring the far corners of the universe and the near ones, old, new, and always interesting facets of the great heavy metal story. Today, turning back the clock a quarter century to 1994, when groove metal ruled the roost. I'm Ian Christie. I wrote a book called Sound of the Beast, the complete head-banging history of heavy metal. I'm also the publisher of BazillionPoints.com, home to the heaviest reading ever committed to paper in books like Murder in the Front Row, Swedish Death Metal, Metallion the Slayer Mag Diaries, Dirty Deeds, Heavy Metal Movies, Choosing Death, and much, much more. Follow in flames at Bazillion Points and visit BazillionPoints.com. Yes, today we look at the infamous and often misunderstood breed known as groove metal. Post-thrash, when already the funk metal influences were coming in, physical bouncy jams by coming out of masters like Exodus and even Slayer, who will hear grooving it up in a few minutes, but not yet fully metastasizing into the truly divisive breed of new metal that overtook and created civil war in metal in the late 1990s. The groove metal of 1994, I think you'll find today, was a natural progression. Early bands that had been extremely aggressive, fast, like Sepultura, Slayer, even Obituary, they found their inner groove, slowed things down, started introducing head-nodding, body-rocking passages, and honestly, it worked. And it worked so well that you started to hear groove metal taking over basically every kind of metal. Not just... uh, Today we'll hear examples from death metal as obituary grooves it up. From the hardcore side of things like propane and biohazard, thrashers not really changing styles, but just accentuating the existing groove in their music. Good example of that coming up from Testament later this hour. And the same kind of rock and bounce coming from everything. From the southern fried metal of corrosion and conformity to the true originals, Meshuggah and Prong. Many, many examples of how 1994 became a year that metal saw itself, uh, I don't know, puffing out its chest with a kind of macho approach to street-level metal singing about daily conflicts, both as a reaction to changes in the music world around them and just as a natural progression. And hell, it's worth pointing out that classic Black Sabbath material like Hole in the Sky or classic early Metallica stuff like uh, Seek and Destroy, Venom's 1,000 Days in Sodom or Inomine Satanus, get real, there was always a bounce in metal. 1994 is when that bounce became the core element at the center of metal songwriting. In the next few minutes, the groove comes hard from biohazard, propane, and obituary, plus two great examples of vicious 80s thrashers who slowed things down and let the groove do some talking. Slayer in 15 minutes. This is Brazil's Sepultura, title track of the 1994 Slave New World EP. I'm Ian Christie. You're listening to Roots of 1994, the year in groove metal on Sirius XM.
Down. And I'm out of time, it was a real time 
the pages of your heavy metal history lesson. Bloody Roots. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, nowhere near as groove metal as Slayer would become later in the 1990s on the Diabolus in Musica record, but still totally showing signs of awareness of the changing musical world around them. You know, this was no longer a race to the speed and satanic finish line. Divine Intervention in 1994, a polished, poised record. Tons of slow passages, tons of bouncy, syncopated rhythms, and yet the, uh, that lethal soaring twin eagle guitar attack of Carrie King and Jeff Hanneman still completely intact. Welcome back to Roots. We're looking at 1994, the year in groove metal. I'm Ian Christie, author of Sound of the Beast, and this is your weekly drilling down into the core elements of what makes metal music tick. We're examining groove metal in 1994 and uh, putting all these tracks together. I found it enjoyable. I think that I hear the words groove metal mainly used as in a negative sense like but the truth is this mix of bands from across the metal spectrum applying grooves to their aggression definitely was a sign of the times a sign of uh maybe a little bit of fatigue with the death metal wave that had been going strong between 1987 and 1992 certainly most of these bands you will hear today started out life on roadrunner records who had been synonymous with death metal in the early 1990s. And all of a sudden, in 1994, all of their bands had this swaggering, stomping groove, basses, bass playing high in the mix, polyrhythmic patterns on the drums. In a lot of ways, this was like the real realization of the flirtations that thrash metal had done with rap metal, like Anthrax's Public Enemy collaboration, Exodus covering funk songs. The groove metal of 1994 is those impulses bred back into just something pure metal and aggressive. And the record labels were there to support this. So much of what we're hearing today were major label releases. Headbangers Ball is still going strong in 1994. Nobody knew the axe would cut metal music videos off of MTV the following year. And what I guess you could call the resistance, there wasn't really the schism between bands that played it a little bit more funky. And then, you know, the bands like Dissection and At The Gates, who were just pure metal to the hilt. Like I said, these grooves did have their roots and origins in classic metal songwriting. You can hear Geezer Butler's bass playing influence. In fact, Geezer Butler himself coming out with his own take on groove metal with the band GZR during this time period. And even bands that didn't make a prominent showing in 1994, like Anthrax and Fear Factory, still very much circling, swirling in the neighborhood and vicinity of groove metal. Branching out here with a block of songs that all undeniably have uh, body rock and appeal. Uh, I don't know what it, like a full body head banging groove metal appeal. Stuff from Prong, the very unique New York-based industrial metal band that went through a period as straight-ahead thrashers but came back around to a very repetitive, mechanical kind of approach to groove metal. Something from Southerners' Corrosion to Conformity, who wrapped up Southern rock, stoner metal, and groove in a totally appealing package in 1994. Classic material from their Deliverance record. And a couple of veteran bands that got deeply into the groove in the mid-90s, Testament from their low record, and especially the ultimate groove metal success of the 1990s, Pantera. This is a band raised on Van Halen, Scorpions, and Kiss, who wrapped up their sound in the aggression of thrash metal at the very end of the 1990s after a solid 1980s run as a traditional heavy metal band, but always had this bouncy, hard rock, groovy element to their songs that served them very, very well in the 1990s. White Knuckle Groove here from 1994's Far Beyond Driven. Music to come by Prong, Testament, and very early signs of mathematically impossible groove from Meshuggah. All coming up here on Roots of 1994, the year in groove metal. Yeah. 
the pages of Sound of the Beast. Your weekly heavy metal history lesson with Ian Christie. Liquid Metal!
<laughs> yes, it's so tight and uh, wrapped up. It's practically disco music. The metal disco of Groove Masters Prong, something from the Cleansing Record, released in 1994, wrapping up today's Roots Metal History lesson, examining 1994, the year in groove metal. And yes, sadly, in 1994, bands like Sepultura, Machine Head, Pantera, Prong, Corrosion of Conformity, all still had major label support, things uh, going very well for them. They were ruling the roost, and yet very quickly, things started to collapse. In 1995, Headbangers Ball leaving the airwaves, a lot of record label reshuffling happening. This groove metal scene saw itself splinter apart, the solid support and momentum evaporating uh, somewhat as the new metal scene came into the forefront. And things became much more gimmicky, image-oriented, and the direct connection that these bands like Slayer and Sepultura had to the natural evolution of metal to something more intense and extreme, they were severed somewhat. I guess we've reached the part of this week's show where we see exactly why. One of the key culprits of that plays something from their debut album in a second. First, let me just thank you for listening to Roots. This is your weekly metal history lesson. Every week, a different country, a different time period in metal, some different key figures as the metal story continued to astound and amaze the universe. I'm Ian Christie. Please check out my book, Sound of the Beast, the complete headbanging history of heavy metal, and then fatten your bookshelves to the fullest with books like Swedish Death Metal, Metallion the Slayer Mag Diaries, Choosing Death, the improbable history of death metal and grindcore, Heavy Metal Movies, Eerie Vaughn of Sam Hain and Danzig's great book, Misery Obscura, and so much more at bazillionpoints.com. Thanks very much. I'm leaving you now with a track from the 1994 self-titled debut album by the band that was the logical conclusion of all of this maelstrom of groove metal. Yes, inevitably, it is Bakersfield, California's Corn, whose self-titled 1994 record went gold, leapfrogging them above the long-standing groove metal. Uh, and of course, even if metal was dissipated in the late 1990s, it regrouped and came back full force in the 2000s. So without further ado, a quick vicious track here from the first Corn record, a band that built on the basics of groove metal and really opened the floodgates for everything to come in the next few years. Thanks a lot for listening, leaving you here with this example of groove metal, free-based and boiled down, coughed back up in concentrated form, track called Divine from the first Corn record. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Roots of 1994. The year in groove metal.
Christie's Bloody Roots, Liquid Metal's hour-long crash course in headbanger history.